So this is a two-part video focusing on chromosomes, mitosis and the cell cycle. In the first part we're going to focus on chromosomes and this is our learning objective to be able to describe the structure and function of chromosomes. So as always all the timestamps will be in the description below so feel free to skip to whatever part you need help with. So there's quite a few definitions for this part of the video and they're all shown on the screen. The first one is chromosomes, which are thread-like structures made of DNA and they're found within the nucleus. The second is homologous chromosomes, which are two chromosomes which have the same genes. The third is DNA, which stands for deoxyribonucleic acid and it carries the genetic information of a living organism. The fourth is diploid, which is the number of chromosomes which are found in body cells, which is 46 in humans. And the final one is haploid, which is the number of chromosomes which are half of the amount of chromosomes found in body cells, which is 23 in humans. For this topic, you should have a good knowledge of subcellular function, including the structure and function of the nucleus. This topic relates really well to both cell structure and DNA and chromosomes are also really important in the processes of mitosis and meiosis as they essentially allow genetic information to be transferred to daughter cells. They also link really well into genetic diseases as for example Down syndrome is caused by having too many chromosome 21s. So in this diagram we kind of have a schematic representation of the difference between the nucleus, the chromosome and a gene. So if we start with the diagram on the left, so we have a cell and the purple bit which has an arrow coming out of it is a nucleus. So we'll label that as so. And that's basically where all the genetic information of a cell is stored. And it's kind of packaged into kind of smaller elements which are known as chromosomes. So that is the uh, pink and purple kind of structure there. That's a chromosome. And in total, in normal body cells, we have 46, which is the diploid number. However, in certain cells, we can also have less, but we'll come to that in a moment. So on a chromosome, you have lots of different areas which are coding for different things. And a section of DNA, for example, the purple section, which is um, kind of highlighted on the chromosome, is called a gene. And a gene is essentially a section of DNA which can code for a specific protein. So what's the difference between a gene and an allele? So obviously a gene is a section of DNA and they code for a certain protein and therefore a certain characteristic. So for example, you might have a gene for hair colour or for eye colour. The allele is basically a different form of a gene. So my, while you might have a gene which codes for hair colour, you could have an allele for blonde hair, for example, or for brown hair. So the alleles are basically the different varieties of each gene. Now, earlier I said that each body cell has uh, 46 chromosomes within the nucleus. However, certain cells have a haploid number. So those are going to have 23, which is half. So the cells which have 23 chromosomes are known as gametes. And these are cells such as egg cells and sperm cells. And the reason they have 23 chromosomes is because when fertilization occurs and two of these cells fuse, 23 plus 23 is 46. So the normal number of chromosomes is then restored. This is the normal human karyotype which is basically a representation of all the chromosomes within the nucleus, within a normal body cell. So if we look at this, we can see that we have 23 pairs of chromosomes, which in total add up to 46 individual chromosomes. So from number one to 22, these are known as autosomes. So they're basically just kind of normal um, body chromosomes. And then the last pair, which is pair 23, which I've just underlined, are known as the sex chromosomes, as they basically decide whether um, a cell or whether a fetus, for example, is genetically male or female. 
So for example, um, in this karyotype, we have an X and a Y chromosome, and that means that this is a, um, a male karyotype. However, if we had two X chromosomes, that would result in a female karyotype. So as I previously mentioned, having a different number of chromosomes can also indicate um, a genetic disease. So quite a common one is Down syndrome, which occurs when you have three copies of chromosome 21. So in the first half of this video, we've learned about the structure and function of chromosomes and how we can view all the chromosomes in one cell as the karyotype. In the second half of the video, we're going to learn about mitosis and the cell cycle to understand further how chromosomes can be used to transfer genetic information onto daughter cells. So in the second half of this video, we're going to talk about the cell cycle and our learning objective is to be able to describe the stages of the cell cycle, including mitosis. In this video, we're going to cover the cell cycle and our learning objective is to be able to describe the stages of the cell cycle, including mitosis. As always, all timestamps will be in the description below, so feel free to skip to whatever part you need help with. So these are our definitions. The first one is the cell cycle, which is a series of stages that a cell passes through as it grows and divides. The second one is mitosis, which is a form of cell division, which produces identical daughter cells. The third is DNA replication, which is the formation of an identical copy of a genome. So for this topic, you should know how genetic information is contained within the cell, that's within the nucleus and also within chromosomes. And although it's not a requirement to know beforehand, this topic links quite well to DNA replication, as that is one of the stages of the cell cycle. And also meiosis, which is a similar process, which forms daughter cells. And it's really good to know the differences between mitosis and meiosis. So for example, this is our cell and we've got our chromosomes lined up along the equator so there are little proteins which basically pull those apart so the genetic material can be divided so they kind of move to opposite poles and after a period you should get something a little bit like this so where we have pieces of each chromosome on each side of the cell after that happens, the cytoplasm and the cell membrane need to divide to form two separate daughter cells, and that is the process of cytokinesis. So at the end, we should end up with two separate daughter cells, which are genetically identical to the original cell. So now we're going to go a bit more into detail into the exact phases of mitosis, of which there are four main phases. The first phase is known as prophase. And this is essentially where chromosomes condense and they become more visible, as you can see, and also the nuclear membrane breaks down and disappears. Second phase is metaphase. And this is the phase where all the chromosomes within a cell will line up along the central equator, ready to be pulled to either side of the cell which occurs in the third phase, which is known as anaphase. So write that down. So in anaphase, as you can see, the chromosomes which have been lined up along the equator have been split in half and each half has been pulled to an opposite end of the cell, which is carried out by kind of really small proteins um, within the cell. So that means we have um, half of our kind of chromosome DNA on each side of the cell. The fourth phase and final phase of mitosis is known as telophase. And in this phase, as you can see, the cell is starting to um, divide a little bit more and we have new membranes which are forming around the chromosomes uh, at either end of the newly developing daughter cells. So that is technically the last phase of mitosis. After this, we move into a process called cytokinesis, which is a separate phase in the cell cycle. And it's in this phase where we get the um, formation of two separate daughter cells, and we get the fusion of the cell membrane um, to contain the new genetic material. And the really 
key important thing to understand with mitosis is that our daughter cells are exactly genetically identical to the cells that we first had in prophase as we're trying to you know maintain the same genetic information and these cells that we then produce can go through the cell cycle again and go through mitosis and then produce um, a total of four new daughter cells. So these are two really common mistakes that students make when answering questions on mitosis and the cell cycle. So these are two things that you really need to make sure that you can remember. So the first one is that mitosis is not the same as meiosis. Even though they are very similar words, they have a different kind of end product. In mitosis, our daughter cells are always going to be identical and they're going to have the same amount of genetic information. Whereas in meiosis, our daughter cells are not necessarily going to be identical and more often than not, they aren't identical and they also have half the normal amount of genetic material than our starting cell. The second one is that DNA must be replicated beforehand, before mitosis occurs. And that doesn't occur within the actual process of mitosis, it occurs in interphase, which is part of the cell cycle. So this is our first worked example question for mitosis and the cell cycle. So a student wanted to find out more about the cell cycle. The student made a side of an onion root tip. She counted the number of cells in each stage of the cell cycle in one field of view. The table below shows the results. Each stage of the cell cycle takes a different amount of time. Which stage is the fastest in the cell cycle? Give a reason for your answer. So the first thing that we need to do is look at all the data within the table and kind of work out what it's telling us. So if we look um, kind of horizontally along the rows, we can see that the total number of cells in the field of view is 36. And out of those, 20 are non-dividing, so they're not going through mitosis. And then there's kind of a few other, so 16 more, which are in various stages of the cell cycle. So if you think about it kind of logically, if a um, stage is quite fast, it's likely that, you know, it's gonna get over and done with pretty quickly. So there's going to be less cells which are in this stage um, at any time of you looking um, at the cells in the root tip. So if we look at the number of cells which are in each stage, um, the smallest number is four. So we can kind of deduce from that that the fastest stage is going to be stage four. And that is going to be because there's only one cell in, there's only one um, kind of cell in that stage. So fewest cells in stage. Second part of the question is the cell cycle in an onion root tip takes 16 hours. Calculate the length of the time of stage two in a typical cell. Give your answer to two significant figures. Okay, so first of all, we need to look at how many cells out of the total amount of cells in the field of view are within stage two, as that can give us a rough estimate of how long it actually takes. So if we take a look at the information in the table, we can see that four cells are in stage two currently out of a total of 36. Then it also tells us that the total time of the cell cycle is 16 hours. So we can do four over 36 times 16. And the answer um, asks for units of minutes. So we can also times by 60 to kind of convert that into minutes and then our answer from that is going to be 106.6 uh, recurring from a calculator and the second part of that question asks us to give it in two significant figures so that would be 110 and our final answer is 110 minutes. This is our second work example for mitosis and the cell cycle so I'm going to ask you to pause the screen for a moment and have a go at it and then I will walk you through it. So mitosis occurs in plant cells during growth. Describe a division of a cell by mitosis. So this question is only through marks, so we don't necessarily need to go into a lot of detail about mitosis. 
just kind of describe what it produces and what the features are of the daughter cells. So the basics of mitosis is that we're going to produce two daughter cells. So we'll put that down first. Produces two daughter cells. And then thinking about the characteristics of those cells, what's really important in mitosis is that one, those cells are genetically identical to our original cell. So they're going to be genetically identical. And then an another factor which differentiates mitosis from meiosis is the fact that our cells are diploid. So we'll put that down, which means, of course, they have 46 chromosomes. And that is all three marks. So to summarise, in this video, we've covered all three stages of the cell cycle and also looked at the phases of mitosis. So the next step I would recommend is to do lots of questions um, covering these topics and also have a look at DNA replication and meiosis as those are quite similar processes which are also equally as important in cell biology.